Welcome to the Borden Scale <laughs> Podcast, take two. <laughs> if they had heard the first song. If they had heard the first one. They would have known I'm pregnant. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Yep. Please. <laughs> Please, just kidding, Santa. We don't need no extra gift. <laughs> um, as always, it's me, Sebastian. And it's Kenzie. And we have a new. And we have Dwayne. A new version of Dwayne. D-Weezy. Yeah. Slightly modified. Slightly modified. <laughs> he went and got a new reverse tan. Yep. You know, it's made by Tesla. <laughs> you know, do with they that just information suck them out and straight out of your skin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> pretty sure I'm getting canceled with that. That was your first episode and your last. <laughs> <laughs> it's been real. It's been fun. You're not welcome back. Okay. Um. So I'll just jump right back into it since we were about 15 minutes into the story of how we met Kevin and how he joined our gaming life. Mm. You can go ahead and say all of that again. Oh, yeah. So where were we? Uh, yeah. So uh, we were back, Black Potion, um, hanging out. And Enrique, uh, I was waiting for Dwayne to show up uh, for our regular Sunday fun day games. And um, this dude wanders into the store with his big old... Um, Whoa, deja vu. Yeah, <laughs> huge deja vu. <laughs> Walks into the store with his big old game bag, uh, like a pro. Clearly knows what he's here for. And uh, Enrique calls him over and says, "Hey, you know, you want to play? What you here for? Are you meeting anybody?" And uh, he said, uh, "Would you? You wanted? We were." I, I specifically was there to play Brass Birmingham. That's right. I was sick of waiting to play a game i wanted to play so i was just like you know what i'm gonna go and force some strangers to play with me yeah. he took like five games i did take like five what were the other ones encyclopedia was one orleans okay Anno. Orleans. Or- orleans orleans Anno. wow what did you just say sebastian orleans i'm drunk that's why you're orleans. infiltrating yeah Jeff. infiltrating yeah, next we'll get Orleans. I had, next I, we'll get I to had a say bag Barcelona. of games. N- I'm never. I will I can't never. Do that. Barcelona. Oh. Not seriously. I'll say it like for funnies, but yeah, all right. So big bag of games, <laughs> and we ended up playing crew, uh, the crew trick taking game, um, which is funny because I don't actually like trick taking games, uh, and it was actually my game. Um, oh, was it really your game? It was. Yeah, I thought it was from the library. No, it was mine. And uh, Enrique. Had it made fun of me because it's sleeved. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's like a $10 game, and I still sleeved it because that's just who I am as a person. Um, and and then we eventually did get to playing brass. We dragged, Dwayne showed up, and the four of us played brass. And as the games go on along, start to talk, start to get to know each other a little bit. And then you mentioned the fact that you've got all of these reptiles. No. And I'm like, that's really weird. Because in my mind, I'm thinking about these people I know. I don't know them, right? I've heard of them. I Not follow yet. them on Instagram who play board games and have a whole bunch of snakes. So I ask him, <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, uh, do you do you have a Instagram? And he's like, no. <laughs> Doesn't skip a beat. <laughs> no. I'm like, oh, that's weird because there's this uh, this Instagram page called Board and Scale. And he's like, oh, yeah, that is me. <laughs> It's because it's more of a we. It's not my personal one. Yeah. Like, I don't have a personal one. So. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I had this other one that was more reptile oriented. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, well, no. Like, no, this is, yeah, this is like, a, okay, it's a whole thing. Uh, funny, even further backstory, they, I don't know, it's probably you posted a, a, a a, a meme or something like that months ago, months and months and months ago. I know ago. exactly what meme you're talking about because people still go back and like that meme. Which one is it? The one where he was like people to play with mm. where the bar was all the way out and it was. Yes. Yeah. And I messaged him and I was like, Hey, um, like, are you serious or is it just a meme or is it just a thing for the page or do you need people to play with? And you you're don't like, remember that? I do. Remember I the remember meme. that. I remember the meme. No, no. Yeah. I remember him messaging us Yeah. and saying he was in San Antonio. Yep. And you were like, yeah, kind of like both, I guess. And we made like 
half-hearted attempts like or like effort like yeah like com- like commitment i guess to to, to meet up at try. some point yeah meet up at some point and then i ended up traveling a lot uh, in the next couple months and it just kind of didn't happen so Too cool. so Too we had cool. actually had a whole conversation uh and then i don't know after that it just it dwindled yeah well i mean i feel like most of the pictures that we post if there's a person in it it's me mm because he's usually behind and taking the pictures. That's yeah. true. So I don't think I initially I'd... saw him. He didn't I face no to idea. the name. Nope. So the video podcast wasn't a thing either. Nope. No, then the other podcast was pretty much dead. Yeah. So I I had not been seen yet. Yeah. Um, I will say we both learned some new things playing brass <laughs> on that day. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but networks. Yeah. Networking. I still think that's broken as shit. I, I just, it makes sense to me. So that's why I never questioned it. Yeah. And then I don't know it's why. It's also in the rule book. Yeah. And yeah. then I, it, it's on the back of the rule book, isn't it? Yeah. And the facts. Not, it's, no, it's just like no, a thing to it's remember a, it's, specifically. It's, yeah. It was embarrassing because I was so confident too. Uh, yeah. And I, I mean, was like, that's so he, just you. So he told me, he's like, you cannot, no, you can't use <laughs> other people's trains or what? whatever. No, no, it wasn't using other people's trains. Is it? I, I thought that you had to, when you're connecting to cities, that you had to build in the city in order to extend your network. I didn't realize that oh. you could literally build train, 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 yeah, train. Yeah, the train is your network. You could just keep going um, and knowing how important you know link points are in the game. It just seemed kind of broken to be able to just like vomit out trains like that. So expensive, though, in the, sec- in the second round. I mean, it is certainly expensive, but I mean, now we haven't played since. Um, we you might play? soon. Um, well, we're, we're we on a good soon. spree, like a variety. You yeah. Know? We're playing something new every time. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've definitely been killing it for variety, but I do now want to try like a strategy of just being a railroad baron. Just go ahead and do that. Railroads. I haven't won in a while, so it'd be nice to win. Yeah. <laughs> Um, mm. You don't win no. when I play anyway. That was the first. Uh, I don't. I don't win if you or Allison play. I'm That's not true. winning. But Allison hates it. Um, I think she's she undefeated. I think she's undefeated in she that is. game Why? and hates she it hates every time. She finishes that with the win and she's like, "Thank God it's over." <laughs> um, it's just not for her. It's Same with Ark Nova. She like. doesn't like Ark Nova. Um, hey, you like me? She doesn't hate me. Okay. <laughs> um, no, it's more of brass was one of the ones that even me when we first played it, I had no interest in playing it. Mm. I didn't like Sebastian had it was pulling tooth and nail trying to get me to play it, and then by like the fifth time, I was like, oh, oh wait, this is good. So it, well, okay, it was when we got the organizer. Yeah, we had the organizer and we got the Roxleys. Okay, and I was like, okay, this is nice I to play like now. this. Because before we were spending like 10 minutes just like reorganizing our stuff from baggies, you know, the player stuff, the buildings. Oh, okay. I'm like, what is the hang up? I mean, like, that's the only thing is, I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a process. That was really the difference. Dude, it was so annoying. Yeah. I I hate inconvenience. It also, it just took me. I won't drive more than five minutes if I don't need to, you know? No, but that goes. Okay. So this, I'll, I'll, hey, I'm going to, I'll throw back to the previous episode when you asked about like the things that like the, Beg it, like the most upgrades, right? <laughs> or but, but, components? But, 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 or like, I don't fuck words. Uh, you know, like coins, resources. You said mats. I said that was one of my favorites. Yeah, but what about organizers? Oh, I love organizers. Yeah, the folded space ones especially are really nice. We have one that we need to put Sponsor? together. Sponsor? Um, we have one that we need to put together. What did I get? Revive. Yeah. Mm. That Which, holds the expansion that just came out that we didn't find at all at PAX. Yeah, we couldn't find it. There was a couple of Porta games. I don't know if if they go to cons or anything, but they just weren't there. And then Board and Dice wasn't there. Mm. Board so and Dice was, was not there. That made me really sad. Yeah. When I looked at their page and it was like under construction, I was like, wow. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Usually that's like the one place that we go to, like for sure. I want them all. Like, Let's get the new one. I want them yeah, all. Because they pump out games like crazy. So far, Kenzie hates all of them. That's yeah. <laughs> hey, what's this one called? Barcelona. Barcelona. Ew. It's actually Barcelona. 
Blech. Bark Elona. Bark Elona. Barky. Um, but no, yeah, that was a pretty like it was just a funny like co- coincidence of a meeting because Going I back to I that. I messaged yeah because I <laughs> I just messaged in the Facebook group, hey, does anyone want to specifically play Brass Birmingham because I really want to play, and where do we meet? And then I think some people were like, oh, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. We're we're gonna be at Black Tomorrow. Potion. Tomorrow. No, no, no. We're gonna be at Black Potion. I'm like, cool. I'll be there at at whatever time. I think I said a time. I show up, message in there. Oh, I'm not gonna be there till like nine. And I was mm-hmm. it was like four o'clock when I was there. And I was like, okay. I <laughs> probably should have clarified this. Um, I messaged the other person and they're like, Oh, yeah, but I can't play today. Like some other time eventually. And I was like, their loss, but yeah. I gain. <laughs> I walked in. Enrique, Aww. Enrique forced me to sit down, and he said, "You will play this game." He's so good at that. <laughs> you will join our group. He is so good at that. Yeah. Oh, he could be a cult leader. He could be. Enrique, he's charismatic he's very, like that. Yeah, he's also very loving. He's got, I've never he's met got him. So much riz. <laughs> yeah. The uh, I don't ever want you to meet him. He'll steal you. He'll steal you away he's from scared. me. No, he no. He'll <laughs> never. He'll his his love affair with uh, with with Dwayne. <laughs> We'll never. <laughs> Kenzie has no chance. Sorry. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. Yeah. He likes them big and but, strong. Mm. No. Yeah. Unless like you can deadlift seven hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. Can yeah. you deadlift you know seven hundred pounds? Yeah, from Madagascar. Thank I you. like them big. I like them chunky. Okay. I like them narrow. <laughs> Tell me you have kids without telling me you have kids. Uh, oh, I saw that way before I had kids. Yeah. Same. Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, came out when yeah. I was a kid. Okay. Kev. Okay, Kev- <laughs> disclaimer, Kevin is 50 years old. <laughs> Back in my day. Yeah. So I, I was actually a child. I was seven years old when Toy Story 2 came out, maybe. I don't know. Kevin was like graduating college. <laughs> yeah, I'm what we call an elder millennial. Yeah. Or just an elder. <laughs> yeah, just an elder. <laughs> but he's in great shape. So... You know, it's gonna be really fun to look, to watch this video for the first time and to see how much of the gray you can see. I bet it's gonna oh, be a lot. You're a silver fox, man. Yeah, this I'm sure this this brilliant light. Yeah, this source. hospital lighting. <laughs> it's gonna just beaming. Could be worse. It could be bald. You could be bald. You could yeah. be. Yeah, you could be blinding the viewers right now. I give you true. all twelve of them. Year or two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is happening. It's coming. <laughs> The receding hairline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for sponsors, specifically Rogaine. <laughs> um, <laughs> just for men. Just for men. Uh, just for Kevin. Uh, you know, him, <laughs> him's follicle growth, all Ooh, that yeah, stuff, you know. Yeah. And the other oh, him's products. Yeah. Mind. All of them. Yeah. You know, the boner what are, pills. What is that? Hims? It's yeah. for men. It's. That's why it's hims. Okay. Yeah. Or anyone who identifies as a hims. It's off brand men's products. For men's problems, yeah, ah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ah, so like, they have a range of things, like mm-hmm. soft noodle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, that was like their mainstay product. That was like their entry into the men's care <laughs> product. Oh was God. like, do you have soft noodles? You are a fucking child. We can make them al dente for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um. <laughs> I hope you're really enjoying this very festive <laughs> holiday episode. We, hope you're having you're around the fire with your family right now, mm. potentially listening to this. We do have a Christmas tree, so show them that. Happy holidays. Look at these beautiful lights on our very organized shelf. Oh my god. <laughs> may or may not be haps a segue into the next topic. Oh yeah. Wow. Holy Look at you. That's which, what we're here for. Which is the shelfie mm. hashtag. Um, so what I'd like to talk about is the organization mm. of your shelves. Do you have any specific way? I'll let you say first and then you, know, you can't you see ours. And but we'll clarify. And then. Um, well, actually, we'll just go into that. Do you have a specific way that you organize your shelf? Uh, I do it just like you guys. Um, as far as like the, the box orientation that we're talking about. Like, do you do alphabetical by designer? Or mm. You just kind of fit it where it goes. Wing um, it. Yeah, no, there's a there's a there's a little bit of method to the mayhem. Um, Madness. Some, 
It might have been before Ma- our time. Ah, okay. Yeah. I understand that. I'm sorry. I, I always I latch onto one thing. <laughs> we know. So fun and fact, that there, was a, uh, there was a band back in like the early 2000s called Method of Mayhem. Oh. Yeah. So um, it is before our time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that mm-hmm. was not. Yeah. That was a joke that hit, baby. <laughs> we, were watching, you. we were watching Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so like um, there are, I try to keep some of the, uh, some of the, you know, game designers together, uh, like Awaken Realms is all together. Um, Simon is all together. Uh, Le Bout du Jour, um, most of their stuff is together. Le, B- Le Bout du Jour. Is it Le Bout du Jour? Le Bout du Jour. <laughs> um, yeah, they are very French. Uh, they did um, uh, Daimyo. Um, it's a Wonderful World. It's a Wonderful World Kingdom. Um, we played It's a Wonderful World. No, we did not. Yes, we did. We did not. I no, promise you we did not. not. I would never play that game. Why not? I don't like the way it looks. Is that the one with like the seven banners on it? No, that's not. A, no, it's a wonderful world. It's a card drafting game. Oh, I especially don't want to play it. That you, um, you like use cards to either build them or use to recycle them to produce resources to build other stuff. Yeah, no, I've never played that. To oh. produce resources to build other stuff. That's every game, right? I know. No, there's okay. some mechanic. Right. Produce resources. Yeah, I get, get stuff. It. All right. We're gonna. I'm gonna make you play this game. No. Uh, wow. I don't know. I don't know why she's not into it. Ooh, I yeah. was kind of joking, but I just wanted to tell Kevin no. No. Oh. I'm not used to hearing that. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And next. <clears throat> no. Um. So some of them are together. Um. And then like an, there's an awkward transition where like I have some of like my war games are all together. Like all my sci-fi games are together. And then, like, the broad wall that sits in the kitchen um, is, like, one-off games um, and also, like, more accessible games that are easier to get to the table that aren't, like, giant campaign games or, or things like that. So, Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's a method. It's probably about all to get redone this weekend. Ours is about to get redone, too. Again? Maybe. Maybe. Well, we redid it recently-ish. Not this guy. So that I we mean, could... um. This guy. We wanted to kind of center for the podcast for you guys. Mm. Um, some of our favorite, maybe a little harder to get games. We also got rid of an entire four by four. We got rid of an entire four by four worth of games. Although we kind of still have half the games. They're just put away in the garage waiting to be adopted to by their new, new people. homes. Yeah. Mm. Um, but no, we kind of, we just picked games that we really like to put up kind of as the show pieces Try to organize those by like designers or publishers, um, but otherwise, yeah, that's kind of it. we have the Stonemeyer block right there, yeah. Which Three of them. Big fan. Yeah. 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 Um. Board and dice. The board and dice went over there. We have. GMT. Eagle Griffin. Lacerda. Yeah. E- well, yeah. Lacerda slash Eagle Griffin. GMT. Random ones. Cosmos. Fisters over there on the right corner, the upper right. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. Yeah. And then uh, other than that, every new game we get kind of just goes into a where does it fit? It, yeah, it's going where into a it, slot. Where can it fit in? So do you find like the right spot for it and then adjust things around it? Or do you just... Nope, we put it somewhere I just find a hole big time. enough. If it fits, it sits. Until next time. Until yeah. next Which is usually... That kind of happens again, and then it's just a chain of, oh, that's like 11. We'll do it next time. Maybe we should do it this time. But no, we're getting ready to reorganize because my bookshelves are going to go over there. We're going to do custom shelves in the wall. Oh, nice. So this guy is about to, everything's going to come off of it, and we're going to move him over here. All right. Look forward to it. And secondary to that, I'll go ahead and just out you. Yeah. Do you know how many games are on your shelf of shame? No. Oh, shelf of shame? You mean shelf of opportunity? Opportunity. What do you call it? The opportunistic shelf? I your, call them shelves. Your collector, <laughs> your collector shelves. I you have a lot shelves. of unopened games, don't I you? I have a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Do you have a rough number? No clue. Not even a vague idea. Oh, my gosh. I would. So uh, a recent project to codify my games by player count, um, pulled down my BGG list, and then stripped everything out. Uh, most of the stuff out that's like expansions that don't add player counts, and then 
built it so that way, like, when we're like, hey, we know we have four players, or like, hey, five or six, I know exactly what to look at. Because <clears throat> the problem is, is with some games, like the expansion packs, we're like, you know, like, oh, I forgot that, that this game, this expansion can add a fifth a or player. sixth player. Yeah. Right. Like Oceans. Like, it's all just in one box now. But it has a five to six player expansion. But I would. But the box Oceans? just has one to four. We played Ocean. We played Oceans. Nope. Did you not? Were you not there that day? No. Nope. Okay. I mean, I know what Oceans is. It's Evolution, right? Yeah. No. Is that the one you're talking about? It's no. But it's it's it's, a, it's, an it's from that, of that like right? yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Um. But as an example, um. So I have about 250 games. So nowhere near Dwayne. Um. If you. It's more than us. Rocking 400. If I had to guess. Over fifty percent of them, dude. <laughs> if you said over fifty, I'm like, that's a lot. Yeah, fifty percent of them. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, crazy. but okay, okay, back up, back up, back up. Yeah, how many of that fifty percent are ones that you've already played, just not your own copy? Not many. Not many. So, a little backstory. So, um, I started playing games when I was in. First met my wife, ex-wife, um, and we don't played, laugh at that. We we played games while we were married. So when rude. We, when we got when we got split, it was funny. Um, it was I'm sure it was. Funny. I'm sure it it's was funny. funny. It was it's funny. funny. It was a very amicable divorce. I think everything, all things, at least from my perspective, things went pretty well. Uh, I joke with people that, like you know, that picture of the two, the the, the husband and the wife in court. Splitting their beanie oh baby the beanie collection yeah, 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 yeah I joke that the hardest part of our divorce was splitting our board game collection. Uh, it wasn't that difficult though because we kind of both knew like which games we picked. <clears throat> but shortly after that, like I didn't really have a lot of people to play with, and then I went to grad school. I was in grad school for two years. Um, Smarty pants. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was very little time. I played had like one guy I played games with like once a month, and then it's while just I was, you in the mirror. <laughs> playing over the bathroom sink. <laughs> I keep beating myself. Oh, my oh God. 16 hours into a campaign for North Africa or whatever. Oof. That really long game. Oh, yeah. The longest game. It was like 2,000 hour game. Play, Something like that. Yeah. yeah the designer's know. like, you should never finish this game. If you finish this game, something's wrong with you. Yeah. You good, Kev? Yeah. No, I'm good. And then I went to West Point and I was teaching at West Point for three years. And, um, I, I was able to get more games to the table uh, through the, the War Games Club and whatnot, um, but it still just wasn't. <laughs> it, I was not tabling as many games as I was receiving <laughs> through Kickstarters and other things. So, um, But now I have you guys. Do you? And I'm, now I have you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. You remember the threats? Yeah. Remember the threats? <clears throat> and Kenzie also- is... Technically not officially part of the Sunday Fun Day group anyway, so... I'm a part of it ah. just through being with you. It's true. I yeah. respond sometimes. Ancillary. That's a good word. I do always wonder who's responding. I assume that 99% of the time it's him. If it I try ha- to stay out of it for the most part because it's his group, mm. but If it I'll has sometimes... like a cheery tone, it's usually her. <laughs> well, it's like Cindy the other day said something with me in it. it. was like, yeah, this is for Kenzie or something, and I immediately was like, oh, Opened it and read everything above it and yeah. had to know context, you know? All right, fair enough. Because I wanted to be in the chat. Fair enough. Sebastian was where? He didn't tell me that. <laughs> the uh, next time I show up to the game, I'm like shivering. And then the other day when we were talking about, when in, we have an official, uh, the pod group on Instagram now. Oh, yeah. Um, we both sent met- messages at the exact same time from our different phones oh and yeah we're like they're gonna either think we type really fast <laughs> or they're gonna know that it's both of us yeah oh i'm not oh i think i know what you're talking about but i'm not 100 sure <laughs> we both yeah we, i remember we both sent messages like i opened it and as i hit send i saw your message pop up and i was like oh very different like we and, <laughs> and a, it was like an exclamation mm, and then the next one was a question sunshine. Who's am I grumpy? Yes, you're grumpy. I'll take it. That's fine. He knows the truth. I think we grumpy? alternate. We alternate. It's one of her weird like, tropes from a book. It's grumpy book. sunshine. Oh, like it's like, my favorite like, trope. We're not it's talking like, about dwarves. No. Grump- no, 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 no. No. 
It's I'll even say. worse than that. <clears throat> Why did your mind go to Cinderella? Because that was made grumpy. in 1946. <laughs> I didn't. Back okay. in my day. All right. I get it. The only way we could communicate emotions was through talking about dwarves. Dude. Oh. Sad. You and your 50,000 Kickstarters, yeah. speaking of, yeah. I wanted to talk about the FOMO of oh. the FOMO of Kickstarters and the woes of pledge managers <laughs> in general. Yeah, we have we have some woes. First of all, the FOMO. I'm. I think I'm better now. I think I don't have as much FOMO. You're getting better. I'm getting better. I don't have as much FOMO for every single thing that looks cool to me. Mm. I actually will try to see what the gameplay is about. Sure. Um, fromage, the cheese making game, mm. caught my eye because I don't know. It's a weird theme, and that usually didn't you back that? I did back it. Mm. Uh, I, but it was an informed decision that I made based off of my own opinion on what. I read from reviews, the demo, the demo of the gameplay that I saw, and then a uh, what's it called, a recommendation from a friend. Yeah, basically saying like, yeah, it's good. I was like, cool. I'm gonna back it, no problem. Then I backed another game that I was like, this just looks cool. I'm just gonna back it. Which one was that? I can't even remember the name now. It must have been really memorable. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the problem with the FOMO part of it. Does that affect you, or is every purchase for you informed? Mm. You have a lot of information with all the Kickstarters you're receiving. Yes, Kev. Tell us all about this. You go oh, first. me? Yeah. I'm first. more of a... If it's like... <laughs> well, hi, Aries. <laughs> he wants to join. Aries trying to be in the show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm more of like... If Sebastian is like, oh, I think I want it. I don't know. I will back it behind his back. Oh. Because I get sick of him not making a decision. I mean, do you guys not like is your kick? No, we do. I get on his phone and I do it. Same thing. So like it's just through mine and then I'll see that it was backed and I'm like There are a couple that I've backed while he was drunk. Because I'm just like, Okay, let's just do it. It was like the last twelve hours and I'm like, Oh, this is so cool. I really want it, but I don't know if I actually want it. Well, Kenzie is also kind of like I steadily go through Kickstarter. I pretty much open it every day, scroll through it for five minutes. And then I get links. Yeah. Okay. Kenzie is kind of a batch person. She will not look at Kickstarter for months and then look at it once and then back three games, you know? So, uh, are you familiar with Board Game Co.? Yeah. Well, I know who they are just yeah. from, I know their name. Alex Radcliffe. Yes. That's um, where we were. He does a generally every monday does a, a crowdfunding roundup uh and i use that as a starting point oh you've talked about him before mm-hmm. that's the only time i've heard about them yeah um i discovered his content um, a couple years ago and i generally find that he and i see board games very similarly so when for the board game roundup or the crowdfunding roundup he doesn't necessarily rate the games he usually talks about them from a value point of view like if you were to buy back this game and then um, play it and decided that it's not for you, would you be able to get your money back? Which is valuable. Not for somebody who, <laughs> who receives, everything. receives Kickstarters and they sit on the shelf for five years before they get played. Um, hey, then they're rare. Ooh, there you go. Or they're dog shit. <laughs> and nobody wants them. Like or you get the acrylic tiles. Yeah. That or you get a heat else that is in. restocked within six months by the thousands. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they're used to, you know, using his stuff as a kind of a basis for like what I think is interesting because he goes through them, talks about the the campaigns, what the, the pledge levels are and whatnot. Um, but I used to be far worse. I mean, there's a reason I have so many. Um, I've become much better about the FOMO piece specifically. So one of the like number one rules, if a game doesn't have Kickstarter exclusives and is most likely going to go to retail... I probably won't back it, um, which is weird because I, that's kind of nice when they don't do that because they're not playing on FOMO. Yeah. So I'm not supporting them on well, Kickstarter. That's, that's kind of the whole point, though. And yeah. uh, and really, it ends up being big companies anyway. They're like, we are going to retail, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, because you're Simon. Duh. Yeah. But part of it, too, now is that so many of the Kickstarters, when they do their like Kickstarter special editions, it's 
glitzy pieces. It's usually not gameplay content. It's just upgraded components. Yeah. And I'm at a point now where like I care enough about upgraded components that if that's on the line, I'm going to back it on Kickstarter. Neoprene mats is a thing that a lot of Kickstarters do and then don't offer. Afterwards, yeah. Afterwards. That Kenzie, Ken, that'll get Kenzie to back something. Public market. Mm. All yeah. in Kickstarters that include neoprene mats make me sad. Why? Because I don't like them. <gasps> yeah. Do you feel like it kind of well, like, okay, like now what do I do with the board? That and where do I put them? I've got a uh, like a blueprint organizer. Piled on the floor like us. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's better than being on the. Yeah, yeah piled up in inside of everybody. No, they just, I literally got to a point where I had to, I made note cards, like <laughs> three by five note cards that said play, I just wrote play mat on like 50 of them or whatever I've got and put them inside the board games because I would literally in my own home, take out a game, play it, and then remember that I have a play mat for it. Oh. <laughs> that's just old age. And then be like, dang. <laughs> wow. I think that's like the third time this. this, this <laughs> no, podcast. it's like the eighth time. Eighth time? Damn, and unfortunately, just, just like my family show joke, it's going to be overused. Mm. But sorry. I think we I'm go here for it, but, but not sorry. But I think it's episode by episode. Mm. So hopefully it won't stick for Maybe next episode. Maybe if you don't act old for the next episode, we won't get it. Yeah, just don't bring your walking stick next <laughs> next time. Full um, on wheelchair. Yeah. Um, all right. In general, do you have positive or negative feelings about Kickstarter? Does it bring you? Does it bring you more joy than it, than like, annoyance? Mm. Me? Mm. You want me to go first? I'm gonna let you go first. Um, I, I don't mind the crowdfunders because I feel like a big thing with them is the time you have to wait before you get them. I know that's Sebastian's biggest thing about it. He hates waiting. Me, I'm like, eh, we can just play all these other games while we're waiting. Like that doesn't bug me as much. Um. So I don't, I don't mind it as long as it goes through and there's no complications. And then they tell me what comes in it in the beginning. Mm. Yeah, we're not there yet. Mm. We're almost there. So I think in a perfect world, in a world that Kickstarter didn't exist and like all the board games were just at retail and whatever versions of them existed were there, that would be fine. Right? That'd be the ideal world where you don't have to you know, back things like that. And you could like, you know, there's like, no missing out. There's no missing out. Right. Like if a, a, you, people, you know, produce a game and it's there and in whatever form, right. What it, with whatever components that it has, um, would be great. Um, but now the way it is, you know, I don't mind it. Um, but I'm also in a position, um, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I can back stuff without a whole lot of worry. Um, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily have to be like, oh, can I afford this right now or whatever. And I've also gotten to a point where with like waiting for games, I've got a list so long that it, it doesn't really matter. Um, there oh. are always games coming in. Yeah. Instead of a TBR, it's a TBP. TB, to be played, yeah. Or to be delivered. So when it comes to just kind of go off of your thing about like, you know, you're in a good position to just get the games you want. Um, on my side of it, you know, I have to kind of worry about how many months have I not used the allowance that Kenzie gets me, mm. you know, I'm like, okay. What allowance? You don't get money. I haven't, uh, you're I just a house husband. You don't need anything. I haven't bought anything in like four months. So I should have like $17 saved up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need any money. That's true. I have all of my, you need to be 100%. Financially dependent on me. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's also why she won't buy me a car. Yep. One car. One car household. Yeah. She makes me roll around. She might. She makes me go around the neighborhood, get groceries on roller skates. She mm -hmm. says it keeps, looks cute that way. She says it keeps me fit and trim. <laughs> roller skates or roller blades? Skates. Skates. The four wheelers, so they're heavy as shit. Okay. Clunky. Hey. I can't even like do the, the speed. Yeah, you can't position. do any like sick tricks. No. You can't like grind I gotta, on I have a pipe. To, like, yeah. You got nothing. Down the crunchy road. You can skate backwards, though, with, on those. That's a thing. You know how scared I am of busting the back of my head? <laughs> I have like why you wear a no helmet. balance on helmet. skates. Helmet. 
which is dumb because I used to ice skate. I used to play hockey in no. southern Texas. No way. Yep. Uh, so there was a Central Hockey League, and their the Laredo's team was the Laredo Bucks, and they had the little Laredo Bucks, and I was on that team for like a one, like a stint, was like a four month stint. Laredo Little Bucks were they called the Bambies? No. No. It should have been actually the Laredo's like looked up. Missed there. opportunities right yeah, there. Seriously. Copyright laws though. You know, does, you know the mouse would have been in Laredo with a freaking <laughs> baton. <laughs> Probably right. You think you can? Anyway, Kickstarters. Me, mouse Kickstarters. Oh, you can't steal my name. <laughs> oh, that's I'm actually coming. really good. You think because you're a kid, I won't break your legs? Oh, baby. This family show. <laughs> Moving on. Um. So things that piss you off about Kickstarters, pledge managers in general. I want to go, go have like Kenzie say something because she's got some on her chest. I just want the acrylic tiles. That's it. Just give me the damn acrylic So what tiles. she is referring to is Awaken Realms Castles of Burgundy Special Edition Kickstarter. Or sorry, Game Found. We literally did everything. Yeah. The highest pledge possible. Like... We looked at everything that was inside it, like looked at all of the add-ons, but it included <coughs> all of the add-ons. It was absolutely fantastic. We did all of it. We got the the sun drop. Yeah, the problem everything. the problem is that we closed our pledge like the day like that it opened. Like good people should. Like the day it opened, we went, looked at what we wanted, said, cool, we want it all. Pledged, closed it, never looked back because I hate I hate like looking at stuff and being like, oh, update. It's three years away here's from a, getting to you. Yeah. Here's a video of the, I don't know. Here's what the box is going to look like. I don't give a shit. You know, I want ETAs. I want to know when I'm getting it. And also, secondary, th- there's a difference in Kickstarter and GameFound. GameFound, as far as I know, or at least at the time, does not have an app for mobile phones. They don't. So, in Kickstarter... When there's an update for, you know, something you backed, you get a notification from Kickstarter. You get an email and a notification from Kickstarter. So my phone, I'll get the little Kickstarter logo, update, blah. Those I click on because I'm like, it's Kickstarter, whatever. I'll go to it. My email notifications, you know, I get so many spam emails all the time. Um, so the way that GameFound updates you is they send emails. And I would Did just see. Did you not know about that? The long title in my f- three-inch wide phone, Game Found, Awaken Realms Update Number Four, Castle of Burgundy Specials Edition, referring to the, and it would cut off, and I'm like, I'm not gonna click on every single one of these and read. It's it's fine. I did the all in. I'm gonna get everything. It's fine. Apparently not. There was an update that was also like months into it. Not even like soon. It was like midway through the campaign or like. It was after the campaign closed. It was like, well, I, don't, I don't know if it was after. It was open for a long time, but it was months after they opened it. So like, or a long time. It felt like months. Um, I'm not salty. But they bit, They did a, based on, based on demand. How much money? you give those to me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're selling for like $60 on their own. 60 Yeah. That's not crazy. Just That's those it? things. That's, That's a old? lot, no, dude. You not. found them for 60 no, we no, can't find out of stock. them. Oh, yeah, no. I was about to say I think they're selling for like three hundred. If they were in, yeah, if they were in stock. But anyways, Why so are you looking at me like that? <laughs> we weren't able to get the like last three different types of components Workers, in acrylic, and I know it's very much bonuses. a first world problem. But you're listening to a board game podcast, okay? It doesn't make me any less upset. Yeah. Um. So that's one of the woes. That's my game. Like it's controversial opinion against that. Right. So they, the all in was for what they advertised at the time. Yeah. At the time. And they had no plans at the time, the conclusion of the Kickstarter, the game found the crowdfunding campaign to make the full acrylic set, the additional acrylic pieces. It was not a part of the plan, probably an oversight on their part. For not glitzing out the entire game and leaving any cardboard components in it, fair. That's that's a fair gig, right? But through demand, player, you know, 
crowdfunding supporters coming out and saying, hey, look, you need to upgrade these components. They said, okay, cool. We'll look into it. We'll figure out what it's going to cost, and we'll make that option available if it's possible. And they did. And they communicated with people in the only way that they basically have possible. It's through GameFound updates. Now, what I will concede is that I don't like GameFound updates versus Kickstarter updates. They're shit. Because Kickstarter updates in the like you like you alluded to in an email that you get from Kickstarter, you can read all of the the headline of like what's in that kick in that update, and you can ninety nine percent of the time decide whether or not it's even worth reading. Because if you don't care about you know hey this is what the box looks like or hey we've got a new mold of these pieces or whatever or hey the rule yeah. book is is available. Yeah. Player three's arm is bent this way instead of this way for I don't give a shit. Yeah, and and for the most part you can you can like hey this is not related to the pledge manager you're not adding new content to the pledge manager you're not doing any of that stuff so Kickstarter makes it a lot easier. Gamefound you you get this little tiny piece of text and then you have to read the update. I've learned the hard way through that same you know similar process that like if it's a Gamefound one I will always go and quickly look at the Gamefound update on Gamefound and to figure out what it is that they're updating. Because I'm afraid, and <laughs> going back to FOMO, I'm afraid that people will add stuff because they do it all the time. Like, hey, we're adding a we new piece. We don't use GameFound enough to know that they and, do that all the And time. here's the thing. If you have an app where it's easy for me to get on there and be logged into my account and go through the updates of the shit I backed, then I'll do that more. But they don't have an app. Do, do they even send you emails? They make so much money. They do send emails, mm-hmm. but again, you get like, Update number blank for this game from this company, and it cuts off. I wish I had it's one. Like, dude, I don't. I wish I had one in my email. It's not that big of a deal. Recently. I am just salty, and I know that it's not their fault. I get that. No, it's definitely my fault. I mean, it just. the So the one thing that I think is a reasonable expectation when you're adding additional content to a game like that is for the creator to do something above and beyond just a regular update. Somehow reaching out to their consumer base with an additional email to say, hey, we're adding new content to the Kickstarter, I mean, to the pledge manager to that you should be aware of and because this is your only option to get it. That, I think, is like a, the bare minimum that they could and should do uh, to make sure that their their backers are aware that something has been added to the game that they probably want, especially in the space where, again, it's FOMO, where things are limited production. You're never going to be able to get that again. Well, probably. I wonder if they have the ability to be like, hey, we're going to reset everyone's pledges, send out email, have them do it again. No, that would be ter- that'd be No, that would be way worse. Do you think? Yeah, because, again, so imagine people... If you got your- an email that said you need to do your pledge again... You would listen to that more than some random update. I think for a lot of people, once they click pledge manager complete, it's filed away, right? So, oh, you think that still doesn't help the problem? I you think that that's a thing? Do you think that GameFound people know that? So Apparently not. Huh? Alex Radcliffe is the C. Mo Chief Marketing Officer. If you're listening, I know you're not, but if you <laughs> are, tell the people at GameFound to unfuck their updates. Unfudge. For more information. This is a family show. You're right. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Brought to you by Adictivo Tequila. Uh, for the kids. Really make it make there. There needs to be some kind of special warning. Hey, pledge manager update with new material, right? I think every whether that's GameFound, Kickstarter, Backer Kit, um, any of the you know platforms that are that are kicks or crowdfunding stuff, pledge manager dot com. I guess it's really more of a pledge manager problem than it is the actual crowdfunding source, isn't it? Well, it's just that they're trying to do they're trying to be both. You yeah. Know? Well, they are, but I mean, this is really more of a pledge manager problem yeah. because like there are like uh, Crowdox is a pledge manager platform. Same thing, I guess, yeah. But they would be the ones owning that problem, not Kickstarter or GameFound. All right, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Next week, we have 
um, what is going to be the start of a special introduction to a series that we have planned, which is uh, why we took the time to introduce Kevin, because he's going to be appearing a lot more frequently on the channel, as well as Dwayne, in other videos. I'm sorry. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's going to be called Battle of the Games. Yes, or something around that. And Either. I'm extremely excited, if you can't tell. Um, but stay tuned. Watch next week's episode so you can get details on that. We're probably going to be spending the entire episode outlining that. Um, do you want to go ahead? And you get to see our top fives. Yes, and you will get to see each of our top fives representing our personal tastes and whatever. Whose top five will come out on top? No one knows. Later yeah. date. But as always, uh, I'm Sebastian. I'm Kenzie. I'm Kevin. Team Easy. Is the end Team Easy. Oh, of this right. week's Sorry, episode. I forgot who I was. Bye. <laughs>